Thank you. Okay, I apologize for the late start. I just got out of another meeting. But it is here. Oh. 6.01, so I guess we're not really that late. Time to call to order the parking and safety meeting for June 17th. Roll call, please. Mr. Jones. Here. Vice Chairwoman Keller. Here. Chairman Schaefer. Here. Item 2 is approval of the motion summary for the meeting of October 15th. I move. Oh, go ahead. I move for approval of the motion summary. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's approved. And item three, the motion summary from January 7th, 2019. Move for approval of the motion summary. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Let's put number four is public comments for anything that is not on tonight's agenda. If either of you have anything that you'd like to bring up, you can give us your name and address for the record and give us whatever information you desire. Good evening, Brett Latta, 376 North Sandusky Street. I emailed Elaine a couple photos. I'll try to be real brief. Uh, this is a photo of a handicapped spot in front of, I think, Chelly Belly looking south. And I just noticed that there was no pavement marking on the handicapped spot like most of the others in the downtown core. And I wasn't sure uh, why that was. It seems to me like it would be beneficial to the public if they could all kind of look the same. Yep. So if I can chime in on that one. Uh, currently the the code only requires the signage that you see in this photograph here. And as a result of that there have been some instances where people get confused about parking, not being able to identify the spot easily. Uh, there is a current work order with public works to have handicapped markings placed on the pavement. Okay. So that that is a work that's in progress. It has not been completed yet, but there is actually Reporter in place to do that. Are there other spots similar to that on the there, chart? There are, there, are probably, there are a couple that are like this where there's only one sign. There are some where there's two or three signs. I mean, it's very inconsistent. There's no yeah, I think it's definitely there. beneficial to have the pavement markings. It's something that will be added. Yeah. I, I didn't do a full inventory by any means, but I just I noticed that one yeah. and thought they should all look the same. Just as much for the general public as the our disabled folks who are relying on them so can you do that general inventory by next meeting <laughs> teasing you oh <laughs> me <laughs> you're talking to yeah i need more time <laughs> <laughs> give me at least two council meetings right. <laughs> thank you so much for coming we'll put you to work i have one other picture too that i sent elaine this is maybe not a great photograph but this is euclid looking northbound and the picture's a little misleading because I'm trying to show. Um, not trying to show the. Yeah, not trying to show the horseshoe okay. there. Uh, so Hefner kind of comes in to the right just beyond those evergreens. Mm -hmm. And so I probably should have moved out a little bit to, towards the center of the road. I, I, would, I often travel west on Hefner and turn left there at that three way. And I think locals definitely understand that that's a three way stop. But I, I nearly got hit broadside by a bus, somebody who clearly wasn't familiar with the area. And I, I don't think the bus driver was texting or anything like that. It seemed like he was just looking straight ahead. And I kind of wonder if those evergreens, it seems like the property owner on the corner, I don't know who it is, probably wanted a privacy screen. The trees look great. I'm not saying mess with the trees. But as you approach that, you know, if you, as you, I think, cross Fountain heading north, there's a pavement marking that it's a school zone, which is great. It is a school zone, but I feel like it, it doesn't help much if people know it's a school zone and they don't know there's a stop sign there as they're approaching a three-way stop, which we know, especially when school is in session, is a pretty busy intersection. So my thought there was just, you know, sometimes you have stop ahead on a, on a pavement a roadway, something like that. Uh, I don't know if one of those solar lights on a stop sign there would would be beneficial so again that that picture is a little misleading i think the angle of you for the driver might be able to see that stop sign from that same spot but um, it might just be worth exploring that's all we will public works will look into it we'll do a field visit and okay. see if there's any improvements we can make okay. thank you thanks thank for you. bringing it to our attention brad any other comments? Hi. 
My name's Dave Brewer. Uh, I own a house on uh, Senate Avenue, and I believe that's in uh, Hayes. Is that Hayes Colony? Is that that whole you, area in there? The addresses? Uh, pardon? The address? Uh, 456 Senate Avenue. And um, I just wanted to bring to someone's attention uh, a, a serious problem. I, I, I mean, I grew up on Horseshoe. My mom lives on Horseshoe Road, and I, and that was at one time one of the most dangerous roads in Delaware County. And then I come across to the 45 mile an hour zone, and that was at one time the most dangerous freeway in Delaware County. And then now I'm cross that road and I go over to Senate, so I travel that a lot, and I, I survive, which is really pretty amazing. But anyway, um, when I drive over to to uh, Senate and go up um, Pine Crest, and then and there's a little jaunt there and it goes on to uh, executive. Um, I, th there's no lines painted there. The street itself, executive, is pretty wide and it connects Pennsylvania to 23. But what I've encountered, I mean, we've, we've had the house for six years and first of all, people travel fast through there. But um, what concerns me is w when you drive up there and traffic is coming towards you, if there's a UPS truck or a uh, mail truck or cars parked on executive they will swerve and i i didn't get any i just found out about your meeting or i would have had some you um, some video to show you that they will swerve completely out of their lane into my lane and i it just happened yesterday i had to come to a complete stop because people do not know where their lane is is and that, it's, a, it's a curve right there. Oh, it's a long road. It's it's uh, it's cur it's curvy, yes. Because we did something similar with the lining on uh, Bueller Drive, because of the same issue. Yeah, it, I mean, it really is bad. And 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 like I said, you c I can see the division because where the two sides of the roads meet, there's an asphalt line, a distinct black line down the middle of the where the yellow line would be if you put it there, and they definitely swerve because people don't. You realize what side of the road they're on. Yeah, executive is very long. It you know, starts back at right. Right. back end and. So where, 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 where's your house? Yeah, where's the crew? Where are you talking about in particular? Senate. Senate is um, a residential between. I think it's presidential right. and executive. Right. Executive. Okay. Can you see it? Where's the curve that you're talking about? Is the one down below? It just seems to have the fewer drive though. Or all the curves. Yeah, where's yeah. your house at on that map? Re it, it finally goes down to Pinecrest, and there are yellow lines on Pinecrest off of 23 as you start to go up to hit. Well, I guess what I'm asking is where, you said you had to pull over to a stop yesterday. Where, where were we at on that road right there? Oh, on, on the curve? Yeah. Um, Here's Pinecrest. I'm on executive. Right. There's Woodhall, and then here's executive. Right. So I'm going to take your arrow back a little bit. Here, here's down here. Down there. Yeah, I'm we're trying to figure out where the incident almost occurred at. Where's the bird? Where is uh, Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is south. Here's the um, Pennsylvania okay. Avenue. So Pennsylvania executive comes in, mm -hmm. and then you have to take it down again. Yeah. That's our Senate. There's Senate. Right. Senate's right here. And so I'm even down farther. Where, where, where it happens when I come out here. And come down here, and I start coming along this line. I'm going towards Pinecrest. Mm -hmm. Is where it happens, like these curves here, okay. right here. So if I take this curve around, and there's a car parked in their lane, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're parked on this side. They'll just shoot out around that car, but they'll give them because they don't know where their center line is. They give themselves so much clearance. They're in my lane. I have to stop. And a couple of times, it's like. I don't think they saw me. You know, I mean, it's, it's scary. Because they're going fast already down this road. I don't think anybody gets 25. But, you know, on that road, it's, it's just dangerous. I think. Yeah, we have that same issue on Buell Drive. So, you know, right. with those lines on. Matt, could you guys take a look at that? Yeah, we, we will. There's several thoughts going through my head. Um, okay. Would you like to know them? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're here. So, first of all, we have to look at the pavement width. Uh, to see if there's something we could do similar to Bueller Drive. You need a um, certain amount of pavement width or we need to think about banning parking on one side or the other. So we'll start, go out, measure the pavement width or we can measure it online and uh, figure out if uh, we could stripe at least 
10 foot lanes, which if you can't get 10 foot lanes, then you need to start thinking about removing parking on one side. Um, this is very similar to also what we're thinking about doing on Hall Drive as well. That's the kind of treatment we would do here. It's to, to really define the lanes. And I don't know that we wanna, I don't know that I'd recommend we do it on all of executive, that'd be very pricey, but maybe you do it in targeted areas. Um, so what we can do is we can go back we can look at it and do a field visit and and come up with some recommendations. I mean, even when people are parked, I can get through. You know, through that black line in the middle, right. I can still get past the parked cars. It's just that when people don't know, they tend to swerve over into your lane. Right. And didn't the? I'm sorry, I have a question. Did the um, the guide that Bill gave us Correct. scored executive pretty high in terms of? Like being eligible for volume wise, yes, you, uh, and speed, speed wise, yes. it was yeah, it was higher on the list. So I have to revisit. Timing is very spot on uh, as far as from a from a hot topic in the city of Delaware right now. Um, we do have a new manual that's out. It's our traffic calming manual that I don't know if it's quite. I don't know if it's posted yet to our website, but it will be soon. Um, <coughs> but that's where we're going to go for our, our toolbox. That guide contains our toolbox, and there's there's dialogue in there about what streets warrant it, and um, some counts for some of the collectors. We call these our subdivision main collectors, um, and criteria that needs to be met or should be met um, to give the city guidance as far as where we would prioritize our improvements. Accident history um, is one criteria we look at as well. I just bought my first dash cam so I could have had <laughs> <laughs> I could have had good well, thanks video. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. Them. We appreciate it. We will follow up and thank and you very much. We'll come back to recommendations. Uh, what we should. Right, Here, let me you. give you my card too so if that else comes up. <laughs> Item number five, discussion of parking restrictions on Oak Hill Avenue at the entrance to Walsh on those are the use campus. All right. There's, all, there's just all So this is a request originated from uh, from staff at Ohio Wesleyan Safety Department. Uh, I'm trying to quickly find my way back to. Yeah, I don't. There we go. All right, so I'm getting close here. So the intersection is located right here. This is the intersection that <coughs> Ohio Wesleyan is concerned about as cars park next to the driveway here and traffic um, tries to exit the driveway, it's become increasingly hard to see. Um, and they've requested that we look at a parking ban of some distance to help free up the intersection site distance so that a car traveling eastbound on Oak Hill can, can, is more visible to traffic exiting the parking lot for the Ohio Wesleyan facility. Uh, staff feels that it's, uh, it's a reasonable request. There's a telephone pole, I believe, uh, let me try to pull up the street view here. Uh, our original thought was to ban parking all the way back here to the telephone pole. Um, we can quantify that distance when we do the resolution for council, but we seem that, seem, that seemed to be a logical uh, place if we're going to make adjustments, um, we want to do it right the first time. So don't see a huge demand for parking here, but there is obviously some demand that's creating the problem. I don't think losing our staff's opinion is uh, losing these few, uh, couple few spots will not be that critical. So uh, we support the, the request. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thoughts? I've seen it. I agree. Yeah, I've uh, talked to uh, Chief Wood at OWU. They're going to be starting construction in the not too distant future here. So that's going to bring a lot of the parking lot. It's actually going to remain how it is. And uh, Wells Shaw and Basher are going to be uh, demoed. So we're going to have heavy equipment moving in and out of there too, which exacerbates the situation. I'm sure. So you can use a, what, a recommendation from us to go to full council then? Is that what we're looking for? Make a motion that uh, 
There's some parking restrictions on Oak Hill Avenue at the entrance of uh, Walsh Hall on uh, Owoos campus. Uh, be presented to full council for a vote. Second. We got a motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mrs. Keller. Roll call, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Keller? Yes. Chairman Schaefer? Yes. So we'll look for a recommendation, Matt, on that to council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item six, discussion and follow-up for the one-year trial period parking ban on the north side of West Fountain between Forest and Euclid during the school year. We sent out a, uh, a flyer uh, requesting comments. We received one positive, one negative comment. Uh, everything else, I talked to school resource officer. Uh, it seems to be uh, okay with the school and the students there, so no problems. So we're going to re recommend that it stays uh, as it is right now. Okay, so the, the one from Clay Snyder, I what, what what exactly is he saying that it's worse now because of this parking ban that people are parking? I'm not sure what his con what the way I read his letter is that his concern is that they have to move their vehicles by 7:45 in the morning. So I mean he's kind of got me two points in his letter. The first one is I'm reading it. The first one is is that uh, he's concerned because they have to move their vehicles. The first the people that live there. Okay. He has to move his vehicle before 7:45 in the morning. But then he also makes comments about the kids parking, taking all spaces as well. So right. his suggestion was we issue guest pass or parking permits or something like that. And I think at this point the police department would get recommend that you get ideas with the main parking. Okay. So is this something that we need to send a resolution to council on to make it permanent? Yes. Said a yes. Yes. Yeah, we need to. I make a motion that we um, this committee recommends a one-year trial period parking ban on the north side of West Fountain Avenue between Forest Avenue and Euclid Avenue during the school year, and sent to full council for a vote. Second. We've already we, we've already done the one-year trial, right? Right. This so is just oh, the, now the we're fall. voting to make this permanent. Okay. This is to go to okay. Yeah. All right, let, let me uh, revise that to uh, that we recommend a. Uh, a parking uh, ban on the north side of West Fountain Avenue between Forest Avenue and Euclid Avenue for the school year. That sent the council for a full vote. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mrs. Keller. Roll call, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Vice Chairman Keller? Yes. Chairman Schaefer? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, so number seven is an update on passport parking and downtown parking. I've got Kelsey here because she's the expert on passport. <laughs> but hey. we, we, uh, we, we had a, park, a meeting of the parking group that we meet regularly or off and on, I guess, more not regularly, to talk about this downtown parking thing. And Kelsey had sent out an email concerned about there's a new business office going in downtown um, and they're going to need, what, 20 to 30 parking spaces. And mm -hmm. we obviously, you know, we don't know where they're going to park. And as we continue to develop the upstairs of these buildings, and whether it's residential or, or office space, we're going to need additional parking. It, they're two different problems. Residential is more in the evening and office is more during the day. And I suggested that we meet and instead of just talking about that that we have been saying for a while now, we really need to kind of create a long-term parking strategy for what we're going to do with downtown. And even if we build the parking garage, which isn't going to happen for a couple of years, and it, with the what, what, 300 spaces, it still isn't going to give us sufficient capacity for everything that we need now, mm -hmm. much less what we're going to need as more upstairs develop. So what we're recommending is that staff will prepare for council a proposal similar to the proposal that, that uh, Jackie did for the special events, like here's the issues and here's what's driving it, we recommend it would be that kind of a thing. Um, and I'll just kind of go over what the basis of that is. And, and we understand going into this that no matter what we do, there are certain it affects people negatively in one area and positively in another area, and so we can't do something that's going to make everybody happy. But we're trying to find the best way to manage our limited parking resources downtown. Um, and this, again, won't provide all the parking we need for the businesses and residences, but it's a start to manage the existing parking that we have. Mm -hmm. And that then allows us to, our, our permit parkers, our long-term parkers, we can have better access to that parking capacity as well. So here's what we proposed to include in that presentation. We will we'll raise parking fees to 50 cents an hour. We're way under where we should be in terms of what everybody charges for parking. We haven't raised our rates since what, the 80s? Yeah. 
and we're at the point where, according it's to the police department, we really need to replace all the parking heads Charlotte. downtown. Mm -hmm. um, even if we replace them with the same style we have, that's just about almost $500 a piece, and it needs to be done sooner rather than later. So by increasing the fees, it not only puts us more in line with what the fee should be, but it gives us some revenue to do that with. The other thing that it does is it raises our monthly permit fee. Right now, according to private lot owners, they're charging about $50 a month for a parking spot. We're charging about 20. Now, it's not quite apples to apples because if you pay for a parking spot on a private lot, you're guaranteed a spot. Mm -hmm. If you have a permit for a monthly 10 hour meter, you gotta find a meter. And it's possible that they could all be used up not well, and a meter in that area. Sorry right. to interrupt, but yeah. you know, right. you have your parking lot, and if you don't find a 10 hour meter there, then you got to park somewhere else. But there's probably they have to park somewhere else entirely, park. yeah. Right. But so it, it does, it's raising the rates accomplishes several things. The next one is, is a big one that we've thought long and hard about, and I was initially against for quite some time, and that is that to install meters on all the free spots downtown. It's impossible to manage our parking capacity when some spots are free and others aren't because people will always choose the free spots and now we don't really have the ability to enforce those spots at least temporarily due to a court ruling that doesn't allow us to mark tires on vehicles mm -hmm. so and what's basically people can park there all day or at night and what you can do about it mm -hmm. but but a bigger picture even if that gets overturned is you can't we can't manage our capacity with some spots the best spots are free and the less desirable spots are paid for it. That's the exact opposite of everything the parking industry does and everything that other cities do to manage their parking. The best spots are the most expensive. You go to Easton, you park in front of the stores, you pay to park there, you, or you can walk and park free in the garage. The same thing in Old Town Dublin, you know? So it, it, we realize that people aren't gonna be happy about that, but it, we, we, we gotta move ahead. The next thing is to increase and extend enforcement from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the week to kind of capture the workers that are coming downtown. That's that pretty much hopefully captures the work hours, 8 to 6. But still leaving Friday, Saturdays and Sundays. Saturdays and Sundays. And so those those spots week. on on Sandusky are those still at 50 cents an hour? Then They're all the spots the for now still will be 50 cents an hour. And what we would propose is that we would put all all the places that we're putting meters that aren't metered now would be smart meters. And our goal is as we replace the meter heads, we would replace those with smart meters. And the advantage of the smart meters are you can pay with a coin, you can pay with a credit card, you can pay with a, with your app, you know, and if it's a three hour spot and you want to put two hours, hours worth of money in and you're somewhere, you can add that hour. What you can't do though is stay beyond the three hours. Right. The problem that Carol brought up when we talked about this earlier is on Sandusky Street, we've got to find a place to put those meters that's not going to block you know, we've got we've already got some patios out there and we've got limited walking space so we might have to be creative about how we put the meters in tom had mentioned the idea of a kiosk and by the way our parking consultants recommended that we meter these spaces initially when they met with us but the businesses resisted and we went along with that kiosk were another recommendation there are a couple problems with kiosks is one we, we kind of feel like we'd like to keep everything consistent in the downtown so every place you park you got a parking meter with a kiosk you got to go to the kiosk put your money in, come back and put your ticket on the thing and, and they're confusing for people very much so so um next is to work with the police department's going to come up with a budget what it would cost us to over the next four years to replace all our meters with smart meters and then one thing that we didn't talk about that Captain Clark brought up is we, a few years back, if you remember, we made some changes in parking fines in order to try and eliminate the business people that were there all day. Uh, we currently have a $7 fee for overtime meters, but it's 40 for an overtime violation in the free spots. Um, so we, we think we need to do something different. The captain's recommendation is to make it 25 for each. My concern is that 25 for overtime meter might be kind of steep. We'll get everybody's opinion, but we do need to do something with the fine as part of this. So basically, staff will come up with a proposal. Kelsey, did I miss anything? Okay. You were great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so they'll come up with this proposal. It'll go to all council, but I wanted to brief parking and safety and get everybody's input and thoughts on this thing because you know it's going to meet with resistance from. Not I couldn't agree with you more. I, I agree with you 100. percent I just think it's well overdue. In addition to this, we put staff to work trying to identify how we can increase capacity, whether it's through public-private partnerships, 
you know, I mean, eventually we may have to look hard at where can we acquire land to put in more parking, or how do we deck Franklin Street and William Street. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is an immediate approach as part of a longer term strategy to manage our parking capacity. So the other piece of this now is that we've got the new, tell, what are they called? Passport. Passport, Passport. parking meters. Mm -hmm. You want to just kind of fill us in on that? Yeah, I mean, so far, I, we've been hearing a lot of positive feedback. I think just um, this is a terrible, in, this is um, an interesting dilemma, but it seems as though right when we put the passport stickers on the meters, it seemed like we were hearing a lot more that meters were going out of order or going blank, and there is no correlation. That's just an unfortunate <laughs> In, that's just an unfortunate um, coincidence. But as we're finding out, as, um, as Vice Mayor Schaefer touched on, is that the meters are getting old, you know, so, and it just happens to be a really bad coincidence. But um, other is that, than- Is that the goal to replace each of the expiring old meters with the new smart. credit card smart meters? Right, but I think one thing to keep in mind is, you know, people are still very much about their quarters here in this city, I've yeah. heard. So that could be the, the difference between a kiosk versus a smart meter, because I'm pretty sure smart meters still take change, right. if I'm not mistaken. They'll take change. They'll, They'll take change, cool. The kiosk so, I don't believe does. The yes, a kiosk card. does not. Yeah. So that's another consideration as we move forward with that. But um, yeah, honestly, the, the statistics that we're able to get from Passport is really about how many people have downloaded it, which is about 863 since launch, which I believe was April 1. Is it now, when you download the app, is that, can you, can you I, because I'm still a coin guy. Yeah, that's fine. Like, can, you, can you pay the Passport on your app? Yes. Yeah. And does it tell you where spots are available or just? It does not do okay. that. Right. No, it doesn't do that. Okay. I've noticed, oh, I've looked into different apps like that and I, there's one called Parking Spot, but all that I've seen is those are big metropolitans that are getting that kind of attention and that kind of detail. That's, that's pretty much one of the things I've just noticed myself is sometimes I'll arrive and I give myself all of, I need to be in an appointment in one minute and here I am at my spot. Um, and there were a couple parking meters that had both. You could put a quarter in or you could download the app. And I'm like, I don't have time to download an app right, right. now. Um, I have to be somewhere right now. I would try to go put a quarter in and some of the meters were um, not functioning. Mm -hmm. So then I just kind of took my chance instead of, here in town. Yeah. yeah. Like if they write me a parking ticket, but I had yeah. cash and couldn't put it yeah. in, yeah. you know, so I would take a picture of the broken meter mm -hmm. and try to work it out later. But I'm just kind of wondering, will that remain an option to pay with quarters, or will it all be switched over? Well, you can still pay. The smart meters still allow you to pay with quarters, credit yeah. card, or your app. So that Once will continue? Once you the app, though, if you download the app tonight, from now on, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Well, well and as we transition, card, you can just do it. Okay. As we transition to these smart meters that take change or card, I mean, there will be no need for Passport any longer. Right. So that won't even need to be an option. But as we phase them in, we'll still continue to use Passport with those older meters. But you know, but I hope we're going to do what like Cincinnati does. Those smart meters also are, have an ID like Passport uses, so you can re-up them from your phone. Yeah, and I'm not as familiar with like what what different capabilities of smart well, meters are. I'd have to, to, I'd have to lean on Captain Clark over there. But in terms of like zones and bases, is that yeah. what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, their meters are just like Passport. If they have a zone and a space number, you have the app, and you can put money in the meter and pay for it with a credit card, but you can from anywhere just pull it back up and add time to it. Oh, okay. So it that's tied you, in with the smart meter. And not It'll the even give you alert when it's going to tell you have five minutes left on your, yeah. ten minutes left on your. But it's on a smart meter. Cool. Mm. I got school. So, I mean, ideally, it'd, it'd be nice to have that too. But. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, other statistics that um, Kim Morris has presented with us, which, you know, kudos to her. Um, you know, just basically how much money we're collecting on a monthly basis. You know, um, uh, we didn't, uh, Mr. Schaefer didn't capitalize on some of the statistics, but I mean, at this point, 89% of our permits are um, are being used. Like we're running out 89% of those permits. So it is a very serious problem issue. We need to figure out what we're gonna do long-term as more and more uh, investment is being put in our second and third floors. So that's huge. Um, I think that we've been focusing a lot on after hours parking, but I think the real, the real thing that we need to start focusing on is, is daytime for that. And um, you know, overall revenue for parking has dropped pretty significantly. There's a lot of reasons that could that that could be. It could be because Delaware to Park might be cool, might be you know doing its thing, and people might not be paying after five. 
But, um, you know, we went from two parking enforcement officers to one, and um, I think, what does it say here? We went from 67% of revenue potential for meters down to 49 in 2018. So, um, and then for permit funds, we were at 102% revenue, poten revenue potential in 2016 versus, again, we're about at 89% now. So, I don't know what we did in 2016, but, uh, we were over we were over committing it seems but uh, yeah I that's just a couple just additions just throwing out some numbers to back up what Mr. Schaefer was saying but yeah I think anything I missed from that meeting in your, from your perspective I believe you nailed all the items that we talked about mm -hmm. you know for me like perfect examples I, I support this hundred percent is you know we had the festival at St. Mary's this weekend on Friday and you couldn't find a parking space I mean you you could I mean nobody. We don't have a parking issue, we have a walking issue. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to walk anyways. Yeah, right, you know, right. we parked at the police department, you know, this and that. Yeah. But those, uh, the Main Street ones, there was cars there I saw, they were still there from earlier in the day. Yeah. So those are premium spots that should be able to get turned over. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's exactly. And that's what we're mainly looking at, is where, where are we putting employees? Where are the restaurant, retail, office employees? Where are they parking? Right, <laughs> right where all of everybody's customers are parking, so trying to increase that turnover as best as we can in the f most prime spots is the, is the big is the big ordeal at this point. So my main purpose tonight was just to let this I think group it's know what we're talking about and hopefully get your support so when this goes before council we'll Absolutely. be ready to move forward. I'm a little bit worried about changing it to six just because I think it's so ingrained in so many people. I'd love to get Lee involved and kind of do a outreach type of thing with the Delaware to park with Lee yeah. on all of our if we have them like social media outlets you know, changing just to you know when we are ready to roll out changes oh, or yeah. that we, and, and we also anticipate that there will be a, a taste for public comment on this before yeah. council yes but you're, you're absolutely right we, we want to ch provide all the justification for why we're doing what we're doing and again no one then everybody's gonna like it but at least they'll understand why we're making this right so. okay sounds good so that's it for that. Staff comments. Anything else? Want to give you order? Member comments? I have one quick one, and shame on me for not walking around downtown between meetings. I should have looked myself, but the new um, electric vehicle chargers over there. We talked about putting in a sign that said um, um, fines. You know, if you're not an electric vehicle and you're parked here, did those ever go up? I do not believe okay. are we still having to do that yes we we, okay. we will follow up with that okay great. yep it's might just be in our backlog of okay. signs to make it's <laughs> all ahead i have nothing no do i is there a move to adjourn so moved you're adjourned thank you everybody that's how you want to meet you guys did that break the planning commission record from yeah. the last week no. was that no I